97, isn't it? Shit. <sighs> I was two years late. I was two years late to find baby Brian nestled up in his crib and me smothering him so you didn't have to do with this bull- Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Channel with K. My name is Brian. I'm in 1997, apparently, even though this was my sister's room and she would have been five, and so I wouldn't be sitting here right now, but, hey, plot holes are plot holes, we're gonna go with it, Third Eye Blind, I think they put out an album earlier this year, they're self-titled, there was their debut, I think we should just talk about it for Classics Lee, should we? Okay, let's get into it, Third Eye but Wave, okay. I had to go back, well, to the present to get this beanie because my hair looked like garbage. So now we can talk about the Third Eye Blind album. Funny? I know it's not funny. I'm a joke. Third Eye Blind is a alt-rock band from San Francisco. Like I said, this is their debut studio album. And I wanted to talk about it for Classics Week because, yes, every time I talk about classic albums, sometimes they're important for a band. Sometimes they're important for music. But for me... I just thought that this was sort of an important moment for the 90s in terms of all the styles that they combined on here and just the hits. The hits keep coming on this album and I want to talk about it because I think it's a great album and I think it's underappreciated and we're going to talk about it. So let's get into it. Stefan Jenkins is the lead singer and main songwriter on this album with lead guitarist Kevin Cadogan and they put together a lot of really interesting song ideas and tracks onto this album. Again, there's a lot of love. There's a lot of thoughts about you not having enough worth, but I think the main difference about this album versus other bands that were coming out at this time, whatever, is their use of styles that were sort of big or in the past or big in the 90s in general because a lot of bands at that time were sort of mishmashing a lot of styles into one. Some did it well. Some didn't do it so well, but I think obviously on this record, it's not like this record's like a rap rock record or whatever, but I think the band puts together a really interesting mix of sounds and styles to go with their lyrics. And what do I mean by that? Well, for example, a songs like Thanks A Lot in London have a more fuzzier sort of aesthetic and sound to it. Obviously, Semi-Charmed Life, the huge single and the huge song from this album that we all probably know, is like kind of like a weird sort of poppy hip-hop inspired track or something like I Want You which is a little bit more psychedelic and off kilter again they go into a lot of different sounds on this album but I think they do it very well because for the most part this album is punchy drums great guitar solos from Kevin and just again great vocals and ba backing obviously from the band but great vocals from Stefan himself and great lyrics from him and Kevin and I think this album is just a really solidly put together album of hit after hit that deals with many different topics. To talk about some of those tracks let's get into the big one Semi Charm Life. This song it's great. I love it. I love the doot 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 chorus and catchiness all through it. Even though when you really break it down, it's sort of one of those, it sounds very fun, but the song's actually about like drug addiction and Stefan sort of talked about how it's an influence on Lou Reed's Walk on the Wild Side, which sort of influenced the doot 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 parts and how he wanted the song to kind of sound like the idea of taking speed. So it's a fun song about drug use. It's a weird contrast, but obviously we see that in a lot more modern music and obviously music back in the day too. And again, this sort of energy follows the majority of the tracks on here. Something like Losing a Whole Year, which starts the whole album off, is punchy, it's heavy, it's just a huge power pop rock anthem. And again, it's the whole idea of a relationship. Stefan thinks that he went through this relationship for nothing, so it's the equivalent of like losing a whole year in life. And again, a lot of the metaphorical stuff about love on here is very different and interesting. Something like London, which is again another fast paced song. I love the chorus on here. I don't want to go to London. He's just belting it out and this whole song is again very obvious about him sort of following this girl that he's with, going around to all these clubs, and sort of his whole idea of not wanting to move there, but he doesn't care because he wants to be with her. Narcolepsy, which is the second track on this album, is actually mainly written by Kevin, the guitarist, 
and it's sort of these ideas that he had about how he doesn't have narcolepsy, but he was sort of talking about how he had issues with sleeping, so he wrote a couple ideas down. This song starts off a little bit more somber and then builds up. And there's actually another song on this album too that does the same thing, even though I don't think there's any song on here that's completely like acoustic, which is Motorcycle Drive-By. Again, starts very acoustically. It builds to the sort of power rock song and then it goes back down into the more acoustic elements. Graduate is another just great, awesome song. I love the lyrics about it, about how you're always striving to get out of something and to be bigger and better and to move on from stuff and to graduate from stuff. And then following that, how's it gonna be? which is sort of a song, once again, about love and relationships. And this idea of Stefan sort of going in through this idea of him knowing that there is a burnout in this relationship and sort of not caring about the consequences after the fact because he kind of just is self-aware that, again, this is how it's going to be and sort of where it's going to go. One of the songs I like on here, too, that is very different and, again, sort of has these ideas of love and romance is Good For You, which is like a spacey rock song. It's really, really, really cool. And I love the elements of it on here. And I especially love the lyrics on here where Stefan's sort of approaching this woman. And again, it's this whole idea of, I feel this for you. I have these emotions for you, but is it good for you? Like, do you feel reciprocal in that? If not, it's fine. Like, are you willing to deal with that? if it's fine with you. I really like the sentiment of the song. The background is another really, really good song. It's very trippy sounding. Obviously, from the title of the song about, you know, feeling like he is in the background with this girl and sort of wanting that back as he learns near the end of the song. It, again, vocally, they sort of mix it to where he sounds very kind of warped in the background, and then a song like God of Wine, which is the huge finale track to this whole album, again, I think is another really great piece of writing. But yes, I did save the one song for last, which is Jumper, which is sort of the big song that people I feel like still sing again next to Semi Charm Life, and how's it gonna be? It's sort of the biggest song on this album. Again, it's an anti-suicide song, but there's a lot more to it. The ideas of feeling like, again, like I don't, want you to feel this way, but if you do, like, I understand, I'm there for you. This idea of trying to figure yourself out and trying not to end it and sort of get through that and fight through it and sort of that friend that's telling you, you know, I wish you would just step off that ledge. And But again, the understanding there, how we all have had these demons and how we have to move on from it. I believe that he actually wrote this about someone who was gay, like same sex related and how it's sort of become a huge song in that community. If not, Please completely correct me, but I remember reading somewhere where he talked about how it was kind of crazy how he wrote it like that, not for any particular reason, but then it sort of became such a huge important piece for them and, you know, him going to live shows and them singing this song, it's very rewarding for him. But again, I think it's one of those things where when you get a topic that heavy, but you write it well, like, because again, you know, we have certain songs that mean well, but you know, have things about it that kind of are a little cringy. Who can relate? <laughs> but I think this song obviously does a better job sort of approaching the subject with sort of a lighter touch, but it also has a lot of deepness to it and a lot of heaviness, and I think it actually is an eye-opener for people about the subject, and I think it actually works really well. And again, Seven's vocals on this whole entire album are just great. You feel the passion, you feel that energy, you feel the emotion in his voice, and it was phenomenal. And that's why this album's really great. I think the ideas that they talk about on this album, mixing all the styles at the time and from the past, and sort of putting together such a punchy, awesome power pop record with some experimentations here and there, and ends up being a really great record, and I think it just sort of sits in a really great spot for the band and in 90s as well, near the end of the 90s. And once again, I think it's just a great record. I think it's something that, looking back on it, it's a really great just piece of rock. Like, I think it's a really great step in a direction where we were sort of getting into an era that was sort of moving towards different sounds and all that sort of stuff. And I think out of the groups that sort of stood at the test of time at that time, they were ones that stood out from the bunch and still actually hold up pretty well. And I think... You know, there might be people that are kind of embarrassed to like this record or the band, but 
I'm not. It's a great record, and it's definitely a classic. So if you guys like this record, what do you think? If you've listened to it, all that, leave it in the comments below. Please listen to it if you haven't. I feel like you've heard some of the singles off here. Um, if you like, please like, please subscribe. We have more classic reviews coming. We have ones before this. Check them all out. But other than that, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for tuning in to Channel BK. I gotta get back to the present because this whole sketch was stupid. Peace out, guys.